We know that 2020 has just been an unsettling year for many, many people. And much of that unsettling evolved around health and health care. But today we have a specialist with us, Dr. Joel Robbins out of Oklahoma, who I have the deepest regards for, who the Lord used mightily in our family's life on two different occasions to bring forth truth and healing. So, Dr. Robbins, what a blessing it is to have you with us today. How are you? Good, good. Good to be with you. Well, doctor, uh, I was just kind of sharing with the people that 2020 was a crazy year. It was. It's, it's not over. Right? And, and, and we've got a few more days. But, you know, yeah. doctor, uh, I know that, that your heart for, for, I know your heart for the Lord. I know your heart for people. I know your heart for the health of people. Can, can you just tell the people just a little bit about your studies and what you're finding relative to, to uh, all of this viral situation that we're in the midst of? Sure. Uh, let me talk about infections in general, and then okay. we'll get to the specific of the set of foundation. So in medical books, we don't, they don't talk about it, but you'll find that two things have to be true before we can get an infection. Number one, something besides the bug has to weaken the body. It just bugs just cannot march in. Uh, okay. If the even if they're you mean the so body has a natural. Let me put this in in layman's terms for me. The body has a natural fortress, a natural defense. Yes, and, and even if we're exposed and it gets in, if the if the body's in good shape, uh, they're not going to stick around. The bugs will be zapped right away. The second thing, so the body must be in a weakened state, and that can be through stress or poor nutrition, if some, somehow it's run down. The other factor that the, there must be the proper fuel or food for the bug to feed on. Bugs are scavengers. They live on toxins. Okay. And so if there's no toxins, they, they, they move on. So, those, so the, <laughs> analogy, the, the analogy I like to use is if you've got – some garbage in your backyard, we're going to see all these flies, right? Right. So we go out with the fly spray and we spray and that's like taking antibiotics, but we don't remove the garbage. What happens tomorrow? They're gone. No, tomorrow their brothers are back. Oh, that part. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so we may kill them They're off. They're gone to get their brothers. <laughs> but but they kill them off. But if we don't change the environment, that's the whole key to what, what I want to get across today. It has to do with the environment. So I think I sent out an email. It's probably what prompted this interview is I said what the, the focus has been on all the news media and even the medical profession, the focus has been on avoiding the bug, okay. right? Wear your mask, stay six feet away and all that stuff. Quarantine. And, Quarantine, and that's that's not what the focus should be on, because okay. so we're misdirected. Yeah, because nobody can avoid being exposed. I'm sorry, it's just yeah. not going to happen. Yeah. So, so what what should we be focusing on? Now, now, Lena, let's let's repeat that one more time for our listeners. Do you understand what the good doctor is sharing? Everyone, essentially is going to be exposed to this virus over some period of time. No question. There's no question about that. We just cannot avoid it. So we just need to get that in our head that there, there's no avoiding it. And so the, the problem with that mindset, it sets up for fear. Right. Every, every little thing I'm looking, I'm worried, I'm in, and stress, we know, lowers the immune system. And, and, and stress is born out of fear even is it not exactly that's what i'm saying yeah so uh you know everybody's just so paranoid now i'm not saying it's not a real bug i'm not saying right. it's not can't be fatal um, right uh, and every so often a bug comes along that's more potent than others like in different uh, uh pandemics we've had in the past right uh, but still this, this one is not that deadly I mean, if you're, if you're uh, about 95 or more percent of the people who get it don't, don't die. 
Well, in fact, I, I heard that number the other day actually to be 98.8 yeah. or something, you know, yeah, or 97.8. I think it's close to 99%. Yeah. So, so what makes a difference in uh, people who get it and don't uh, die from it? They may have some symptoms. And um, for those who don't get it at all, uh, what's the difference? Same thing. One, it's it's the it's the health of the body. That's the factor. Amen. And you, you know, most of the people who are dying from it have a, a pre-existing conditions. The body's already in a weakened state, or they're elderly. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So it's just a matter of keeping our body healthy, getting the rest, trying to clean up our diet, avoid stress where we can. Right. And, uh, and there's three supplements I'd recommend that people take uh, that are, are specific for, in fact, helping the body with immune system infections. Okay. If, if, if you viewers want to take just a second and get a pen and, and piece of paper, I would highly recommend it right here. Uh, Dr. Robbins is going to give us uh, a, a list of some things that we can actually take to strengthen our body to oppose our exposure. Okay, so there's uh, three different supplements I'd recommend. And the first one is vitamin D, D is in David. Okay. And uh, I want to take about 5,000 units uh, twice a day. Uh, you so about 10,000 units total a day. Yeah, it's better to spread it out. Yeah. Now, doctor, am, am I correct when I say this, that I have actually read the studies of, uh, of these cases and the greatest deficiency was, in fact, vitamin D? It's very prominent in America anyway. But, especially, but when we're trying to fight infection, that's one of the main nutrients that the immune system loves. Yeah. Okay. So, doctor... Uh, Mm -hmm. Again, when we when we talk about quarantining and, and things of this nature, are we not exacerbating uh, a situation on a, on a deficiency of D to find ourselves indoors? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, you're very right about that. Yeah, and uh, vitamin C is an excellent one, which stress burns up vitamin C big time. Okay. And the stress, we talked about the fear factor we talked about a while ago. So the vitamin C, probably about 1,200 uh, milligrams a day. And, and, uh, and then zinc. Um, and zinc, we need about uh, 20 milligrams a couple times a day. Okay. Okay. So those are the best uh, immune building. And then if you happen to get con contract the infection, double that. Okay. And now I'll tell you what we're going to do also, Dr. Robbins, we want to put your information on the bottom of the screen okay. where individuals can contact you and, and, and um, maybe you can help direct them even to, to some of those supplements. Okay. So you may give that to you. Uh, well, we'll, yeah, let's put okay. it up on the screen at some time. In fact, I tell you what we'll do. We won't take the time right here because we're getting close. But if you would just send that over to Brant, then we'll be sure and get that up for all of our viewers. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So that's, uh, and also you mentioned the quarantine. I, I think this is going to sound cruel initially, but just listen to the logic. I really think we've done a disservice to the country for doing that. Because just like every year when the flu comes through, there's going to be a certain percentage of people get it. They get over it and they've got their immunity built up. There's going to be a certain percentage. It's usually about 50,000 50, people a year die of the regular flu. And right. those people are going to die. And then it's over. But if we right. quarantine people, we've kept them from being exposed. And so then we got cut out of quarantine. Now they're starting all over. Right. As if it was the first exposure. Got it? Oh, I do get it, doctor. I get it. <laughs> it's almost, you know, the, the picture I saw the other day, literally people are putting themselves in a Petri dish. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's it. So, so anyway, yeah, let's work on focus on health and, and not worry so much about, I mean, common sense stuff, obviously wash your hands and don't be kissing somebody who's already, 
got it, but uh, but we don't need to be in, in fear. I mean, it's that's the worst thing. Let's work on our well, health. There's no fear in love. Perfect right. love casts out fear, and our Maker loves us with a perfect love. Amen. <laughs> so, yeah, that's the story. And I uh, wanted to mention, you asked me to mention my book here, Health Through Nutrition. Yes, just sir. Came out, just came out, and it just talks about the whole story of health and nutrition and how they relate. And, and it's a very practical book, put a lot of uh, practical gu guidelines in there and how to live a healthy lifestyle. That's that's incredible. I would I would highly recommend that book of Dr. Robbins. Again, my wife had been diagnosed uh, with a very serious ailment, and we had no peace that we had a correct diagnosis. And as the Lord would have it, we found Dr. Robbins in Oklahoma, who ran the proper test, found the true deficiency that my wife was suffering, and told her that if she would be faithful to the regimen that he prescribed within a matter of six to nine months, her body would be strengthened to the point that it would subdue that, that virus, in fact. And let me tell you, she has not had a problem since, thanks to this good doctor who truly loves the Lord, loves people, and wants us to be healthy. Amen. And we need to be, as Christians, we need to be healthy so we can minister. We don't have our health. Right. And what value are we to the kingdom? That's exactly right. We've got to be strong and courageous, correct? Yes, amen. And if we're in poor health, it's uh, there's not much strength, and okay. courage is a, is a lacking agent. Amen. So uh, I hope that all of you take this good news of Dr. Robbins and you, you change you change your thinking and you begin to strengthen your body in this hour with these suggestions that he has made so that we know everyone's going to be exposed, but it can't get us. The Lord bless you and keep you. Dr. Robbins, have a blessed day, and we hope to have you again soon and carry this further. All right. Good to be with you. Lord Thank bless. you. I want to take just a minute and visit with you a little bit about Mishmasai Television. You know, Mishmasai Television is an offshoot of Mission Messiah, the work of the Messiah. And we have one desire for Mishmasai Television, and that is to introduce you or share with you the glorious works of our King. And we do that through interviewing different individuals that are impacting their community or impacting their spheres. We do it with the sharing of testimonies of individuals whose lives have absolutely been transformed from states of utter hopelessness to, to glorious hope. And we want to thank you. We hope you enjoy the show. We pray that you are in fact encouraged. But you know what? We want to ask you to engage in a deeper level with us. We want to ask you to be sure and share what you see, like what you share. You know, you can see at the bottom of the page, we have a number of different platforms that you can find parts of the mission on. And we would, we would just ask you to go look at those. But you know, one of the things that we want to offer to you today is basically our you could call it a prayer line, if you will. But our, our nation, our state, our cities are in such turmoil. There are so many people that are bound up in fear and confusion and depression and, and just hopelessness again. Well, you know, for 23 years, we have, we have seen the faithfulness of God's Word to transform from hopelessness to hope, as I mentioned a moment ago. But that line is open to you, even right now, to call that number that is at the bottom of the screen. And you know, Celia Harris, she doesn't like it when I say Dr. Harris, but Celia Harris uh, will be there to, to take those calls, to visit with you, to encourage you. She's actually been one of our teachers at Mission Messiah for some 21 years. An amazing woman, 
incredible vast vault of knowledge of God's Word. She's worked with hundreds of our ladies through the years. And she told me the other day, Jamie, I just want to be a blessing. I want, to, I want to talk to more of these people and pray with more of these people that are hurting. So would you go to that number now and find yourself a blessing and a listening ear and someone that will come along beside you and pray with you and for you. The Lord bless you. Are you ready to break some chains? Well, let me tell you, one of, one of the most dynamic ways that you can break chains is find yourself in the Word of God because it reveals truth. And when we have truth, we obliterate the lies. So let's just take a look at some of those words that have been spoken to us through the Word of God that we might see our chains broken, that we might have a deeper understanding of our true identity when we find ourselves in the Lord Jesus Christ. If you would, open your books with me today over to Ephesians chapter 1. And we're going to jump down to, oh, I don't know, let's jump down to about verse 15. And of course, this is, this is really basically a, a prayer of Paul for wisdom and knowledge. And you know, with all of the craziness that's, that's gone on in 2020, and now we're moving into 2021, don't you think knowledge and wisdom is something that you and I need a whole lot more of? I would think so. I think the lack thereof is what, is what blindsided so many in 2020. But you know what? 2020 hopefully cleared up a lot of our visions. And now we know we need wisdom and knowledge from on high. So read with me if you would. I'm going to start down in verse 15 where Paul says, Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints. You see, Paul is acknowledging right here the focus of these individuals at Ephesus. And they basically are walking in a strong faith and they are showing love to all the saints. So they're not fixed on themselves. They're not focused inwardly. They're, they're walking out their faith and they are loving those around them. That's a means of breaking chains. So he goes on and says, he is not going to cease to give thanks for them or for us when we're walking this out, making mention of us in his prayers. Now listen, listen to how he's praying. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you and me the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. The eyes of our understanding being enlightened that we, now listen to this, He wants, he wants us enlightened because He wants you and me to know and understand the hope Listen to this, the hope of God's calling upon our lives and what the riches of the glory of His inheritance is for you and me as His saints. Now, I don't know about you, but if you just stop and start chewing on that, ruminating on that for a bit, meditating on that for a bit, I don't know how you can help but get, not get excited. I mean... When, when we start to see the Father's love for us and the Father's desire for us and the Father's plan for us, why would we let the things of this world roll over us like a tsunami? We won't. 
That's why we're doing That's why we're looking at this word. And what is, listen to this, what is the exceeding greatness of his power to usward who believe? Now guys, there's the, there's the breakdown. If we are not believing, and let me tell you, that's not a belief you throw up and say, I believe Jesus Christ, the Son of God, I believe he was born of a virgin. It doesn't stop there. This is a belief that manifests itself in a lifestyle. This is, this is a faith that is not born uh, without works. It's a faith that is shown by works. So he goes on and he says, let me read it again. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to usward who believe according to to the working of his mighty power. So we're talking about some serious power is what, is what we're looking at right here. And he wants his power to be manifesting in our lives. And, you know, if you get that picture, and, and we've, got, we're in, we've been in troubled days, in troubled times, and we've got more coming. But guess what? God's promises remain the same. It doesn't matter what the horizon looks like. It doesn't matter what the fake news media may be pumping out. It does not matter what fear pandemic they may be endeavoring to invoke. The reality is God is all powerful and God wants you and me to know that. And even as, even as he exhorted, and you hear me say this often, as he exhorted Joshua, as he prepared to take the promises found in the promised land, so you and I are exhorted today in the midst of all this to take the promises that God's put before us. But we must be strong and courageous in order to do that. And that strength and, and courage is born out of the presence of God's power working within us. Let me say it again. That is born out of, that power within us is born out of the presence of the Spirit of the living God working within us. But you see, once again, that requires an intimacy on the part of you and me in Him. And that is born out of an intentional relationship, the intentional building of that relationship, the intentional drawing near to God with that blessed assurance that therein He will draw near to us. You don't have to wonder if God is real. All you have to do is press in and ask Him to reveal Himself and He will in fact reveal Himself and He re will, will reveal Himself in power. You know, I never will forget uh, I had my, my son was probably a seventh grader and we had some of his little friends and some other dads and we were going to take a, a little drive down to the Fort Davis Mountains and do some hiking and we built this fire out one night and we were sitting around the campfire and you know guys about that age man they want to be strong they want to be powerful they want to be dynamic and the Lord began to speak to me something to share with them and here's what it was your power is found when you are drawing near to Jesus Christ. But just as sure as power is found in the presence of Christ and our relationship with Christ, so is weakness and the obliteration of power when we walk away and choose our own ways. So I just want to encourage you today. Seek the wisdom of God. Seek knowledge from on high. And watch your chains be broken. The Lord bless you and keep you. You know, you can pick up your uh, phone and call that number on the bottom of the screen right now. And Miss Celia would love to pray with you, love to answer questions you may have. 
If she doesn't have the answer, I bet she can get it for you. Call that number. The Lord bless you. Let's break some chains. Hey, welcome to WOW. You know, we want to stop today and just tell you a little bit about one of the amazing facets of Mission Messiah, and that is the WOW Warehouse. And you actually can go online to wowwarehouse.org and find many of the amazing products that you find in the WOW Warehouse. But today, I just want to take a minute and tell you one of the ways that you support Mission Messiah and the work that goes on through the mission and enables us to present encouraging television to you is through the purchase or investment in products from WOW. And so today, I've just got some fun things that I just really wanted to show you and I thought, how am I going to show that best? Well, what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn my camera light on and I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you one of our really fun products that we have sold so many of these over the years, but they're called Soaprox. But the guy, the, the inventor, creator of this piece was actually a geologist. And this, these soap bars look like incredibly gorgeous geological rocks. Look at this. This is aquamarine, but it is absolutely splendid. But it doesn't stop there. The scents on these on these uh, soap rocks are just incredible. Look at this watermelon. This one's called watermelon. But I mean, look at the look at the magnificence of that. Is that is that pretty? So pretty. You can go online, go to thewildwarehouse.org, go to soaps and scroll down, look at some of the different ones of these that we have online, and then obviously you can go to the cart from there. But this one is called Diamond. But uh, I mean, you can see, you can certainly see why that one's called Diamond. But uh, like I say, not only are they beautiful, the scents are incredible. This is the rose gold. And again, absolutely gorgeous. So, I just want to invite you, you know, uh, right after the show, go to wildwarehouse.org, go to soaps, and look through our assortment of some of these beautiful soaps. Put one in your bathroom. The Lord bless you.